Mulvad, the same company that is responsible for Mulvad VPN, the most privacy-focused VPN out there, has collaborated with the people from the Tor project to create Mulvad Browser. So now we have yet another privacy-focused browser that is stepping up and throwing its hat into the ring. And after reading some of the blog posts on Mulvad.net about this browser, which I suggest you read through too if you really want to learn more about it, or you could just download it and try it out for yourself, really no harm in that. Uh, but my elevator pitch for Mulvad, if I had to give you guys one, is that the Mulvad browser aims to be the second most private browser in the world, next to Tor, of course. So right out of the gate, they're focused on that silver medal. They're not even thinking of the gold. They're not thinking of being number one. But you know, the way that things are going with the Restrict Act in Congress right now, any new technology that can help people increase their online privacy is going to be very popular. And to be honest with you guys, a browser like this could be ideal for using services like TikTok. So for those of you who have used the Tor browser before, you may have noticed that when you try to go to some of the popular clear web destinations like youtube.com, for example, while you're using the Tor browser, you end up getting bombarded with CAPTCHA after CAPTCHA, and it takes forever to actually get to the content that you want to see on those sites if you're even able to get in there at all. Now, the reason that this happens isn't necessarily because services like Google are going out of their way to block Tor users. It's more to do with the fact that the IP addresses that make up the Tor network, more specifically the exit node IPs, because those are what are gonna be used when you connect to a clear web destination, they have very low reputations on the internet. And I'm not even talking about all of the illegal stuff that people do on tour, although that probably contributes to the bad rep, but it's more to do with people using the tour network to run sock accounts or even bot accounts on social media. You've probably seen these accounts before posting comments on YouTube where they say that some guy on Telegram helped them double their Bitcoin or some other obvious scam like that, but the comment is gonna get like 200 thumbs up and it's gonna get a long string of comments underneath it saying, oh yeah, this guy helped me, blah, blah, blah. And those are all bots run by the same guy. But in order to prevent all of those accounts just getting banned by Google right away, what they do is each account will log in from a different IP address to try and make it look legit, at least to Google's automated systems. Because if they all came from one IP and one account got banned, then YouTube is probably just gonna automatically ban every single account that logged in from that IP. And you'd probably have a difficult time even creating more than like 10 Google accounts from a single IP in one day in the first place. That's actually something I ran into, an issue I ran into a few times when I used to work at Geek Squad. A lot of people buy computers and want us to help them set up a Microsoft account or something like that. And if we ever made too many in one day, then from the store's Wi-Fi, then we would get blocked because Microsoft or whoever thinks we're trying to create a bot farm. Uh, so yeah, Tor used to be a popular method for some of these social media botters, like usually it was more the script kiddies that didn't really know what they were doing, say around circa 2010. Uh, back then, it was probably the hot singles in your area scams <laughs> instead of crypto scams. But the Tor browser, it gave these guys access to thousands of different IP addresses that they could just use and abuse to the point where now, when you try to visit Google in the Tor browser, you have a 90% chance of ending up in CAPTCHA hell. So let's say you wanted to connect to these social media sites, but you still want to have some level of privacy because, of course, all of these different social media sites they're gonna to try to track you. Well, you could use the Mulvad browser and you could of course connect to Mulvad VPN and uh, you probably have to install some additional video codecs to be able to watch stuff on YouTube. 
But as you can see, we're at least able to access the site as long as we're not using a VPN that has an IP that's been banned due to abuse. But the fact that you have to pay Mulvad to use their IPs, they don't have any kind of a free tier, probably means it's less likely that script kitties that are gonna run very obvious bot farms are gonna end up doing bad things with these IPs. Now, if we start taking a look at things like privacytest.org, which has all of these comparisons of, well, I wouldn't really consider Opera or Safari to be privacy-focused browsers, but there are several privacy-focused browsers on here, such as Brave, LibreWolf, Mulvad, and Tor. So we can see where Mulvad stacks up amongst these and it's pretty much the same as the heavy hitters like Brave and LibreWolf and Tor. And if we specifically focus on the Mulvad and Tor comparison, that's probably the most important one since Tor is considered by pretty much everyone to be the most private browser. Uh, everything is pretty much stacking up the same. It looks like Mulvad doesn't uh, do font cache, so that's an area where it loses out to Tor. Uh, but other than that, everything is pretty much looking like it's the same. Uh, the fingerprinting resistance is also the same. So this is a very uh, important point because this is something that, well, all of the Chromium-based browsers, it looks like, uh, don't get right. And this is very important. So as you can see, I've got these borders around Mulvad, and this is the same thing that you would see in the Tor browser. And the reason for this is when you are connecting to sites on the internet, if your browser just automatically takes up the full screen, then it's using whatever the resolution of your screen is, right? Well, not everybody has the same exact resolution. On my laptop, for example, uh, it is, I forget the aspect ratio, but it's um, like 1920 by 1200 is where I have it right now. So that's not the same as the 1920 by 1080p monitor that I'm using here. But because of this canvas resizing, any website that's trying to track me based on the size of my screen isn't going to notice a difference between me accessing the site from my laptop or from my desktop. So that's an important thing that Mulvad does, LibreWolf does, and Tor does, but none of the other browsers listed here do that. And if we scroll down a bit more to the tracker content blocking test, we can also see that Mulvad is passing everything along with LibreWolf and the Brave browser, but this is something where Tor doesn't pass. And the reason that Mulvad is passing all these tests is because it has uBlock Origin bundled with it by default. Now, there is one thing that I really wish Mulvad browser had, but it doesn't appear to, which is to give you the ability to just put the browser's traffic through Mulvad's network and nothing else. That's actually what I thought this Mulvad add-on up here, this Mulvad browser extension did at first. But really what this lets you do is to use a separate Mulvad proxy server in the browser once you've already connected to Mulvad VPN in your desktop settings. So basically, at least as far as I could tell, the only way to use Mulvad VPN with the Mulvad browser is to VPN your computer's entire internet connection, which isn't really what I want to do. I just wanted to put the browser traffic through Mulvad and then things like my messaging applications and my Monero nodes and system updates, things like that can all just connect to the internet without a VPN connection. I don't mind that. It's really just the internet traffic I want to put through the VPN connection. Now, part of the reason that this might be so difficult to do with Mulvad is the unique way that the Mulvad accounts work because in order to get Mulvad VPN, you don't sign up with an email or a phone number. They just generate a random ID for you. Like you go to this site, you click generate an account number and boom, that's the Mulvad ID. And then you go and add time to the account. Uh, you can pay with, of course, Monero would probably be the best way to do it anonymously. You give them, I think it's $5 for every month and it doesn't matter whether you buy just one month at a time or whether you buy a full decade, it's always $10 a month and boom, then this 
account number is going to have time on it and you just plug that into uh, their app. They have an app that you can download for Linux, Mac or Windows. But like I said, it puts all of your traffic through the VPN and not just the browser. When I go to use a third party tool like Proxy Switchy Omega, which I have used successfully in the past with NordVPN to proxy just my browser's traffic since they have an email and password system for authenticating, uh, which that add on supports, but I don't think it supports just this account number without any password feature. Uh, so yeah. I know that that's a really, really niche thing that maybe a lot of people don't actually want, but it's something that I would like to do with this browser. Uh, but overall, I do think it is a really great browser for people that aren't so technical. You know, I'd probably put this in the same category that I would Brave. You know, it's just a browser that you can download and you're gonna have a pretty good level of privacy using it. There's no additional uh, configuration to do. But if you're smart enough to, I guess, install and use LibreWolf, which now that I think about it is pretty much just as straightforward as Brave. It's just maybe not quite as friendly, like maybe it's gonna break more websites because of the you know canvas adjusting and also it's not as well known. Uh, but yeah, if, you can use LibreWolf, then you pretty much have a browser that's already as good as Mulvad. In fact, in some cases, it might actually be better because, um, let's see, yeah, with the tracking query parameter test, this one here, which browsers remove URL parameters that can track you, LibreWolf does that, Brave does that, but Mulvad doesn't. But here's yet another argument in favor of Mulvad, which is the fact that this browser actually has an organization behind it, which probably has more money and manpower at their disposal than the LibreWolf team. And so I wouldn't be surprised if one day Mulvad actually does end up surpassing LibreWolf in all ways, but we'll just have to wait and see when that time comes. After all, the browser is really early in its development. Well, go ahead and tell me what you guys think about the Mulvad browser. Are you gonna try it? Do you already love it? or? Is it just another meh privacy browser? Let me know in the comments below. Like and share this video to hack the algorithm and have a great day.